everyone, I'm Lauren Sakari, Manager of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion here at Casting Crew, and we are back with another enlightening conversation in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. We sat down with journalist, television host and actor Alfredo Lomeli, and executive producer and showrunner of Gordita Chronicles on HBO Max, Bridget Munoz Libowitz. Check it out. I am so excited to be having this conversation with you today in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. So thank you so much for joining us, Bridget. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. So Bridget, you're a showrunner, TV writer, producer, and you have your own show on HBO. As a woman of color myself, I know these opportunities do not come easy and they're not handed to you either. So um, what does it feel like to be you in this moment in time and how did your journey begin? Yeah, it uh, it feels amazing. It feels incredible. I uh, I feel really happy and grateful, especially that our show has found an audience. Um, our show that happens to be about a Latinx family on a major streamer like HBO Max, reaching families that look and sound like us and lots of other people as well who have been very vocal and supportive of our show and our endeavor. Uh, it's been really gratifying. Well, for those who haven't seen the show, can you share what Gordita Chronicles is all about and how you became a part of this project? Absolutely. So Gordita Chronicles is uh, the story of uh, Cuckoo, a 12-year-old, a chubby 12-year-old girl from the Dominican Republic who immigrates with her family to 1980s Miami. And it's all about their journey as new Americans. How has your heritage shaped your identity and who you are as a filmmaker and even what you've put into this, you know, Gordita Chronicles itself? Yeah, so um, my heritage is uh, Colombian. My mom came to the United States when she was 12 in the 1960s. And uh, her experience uh, as an immigrant shaped my life. I'm a first generation child of an immigrant. And it has been something that I've honestly struggled with a little bit growing up because I always felt in a way that I wasn't Latino enough. I'm also half Jewish. And so I've spent my time in multiple communities or two communities sort of feeling like I'm half of one and half of the other. I don't quite fit in. But over time, what I've learned is that being first generation is in and of itself its own identity. It's the reason that our parents immigrated here. It's uh, the part B of their story. And so it took me a long time to realize that and understand that, that it's own special thing. And I've really embraced that as my sort of identity and how it's influenced my writing. I like to tell stories that reflect my mom's her heritage and her history, as well as my dad's heritage and history. And it's given me a very unique perspective uh, in terms of what I can write about. What challenges have you faced in your career and what advice would you give to others that may be facing the same? Oh, wow. So I I would say that there have been many. Um, The earliest challenge I faced was uh, people not knowing what to do with me. I think you look at my last name and (laughs) kind of confused. There's two Z's and a tilde. No one really knows what to do. Uh, with me in that way. And particularly, no one really knew what to do with the kinds of stories I wanted to tell. There weren't, uh, there wasn't a ton of visibility of Latinx people in the the industry when I was just starting out. And we were there, just nobody wanted to elevate our stories. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is, you know, keep pushing and keep telling the stories that are special and personal to you. Eventually, somebody will see the value of it. I would say, Don't water down your story. Don't try to hide, you know, who you are, where you come from, because ultimately that is the thing that makes you the most special. Thank you for that. I love that. From your lens, why do you think it's important to tell Hispanic stories? Well, I think it's crucial to tell all kinds of stories. Um, Hispanic stories you know, in particular for me, they have a great significance and importance because it's my culture that I'm very, very proud of. I think it's important for everybody to get to know all different cultures. That's how we connect. That's how we get to know the individuals behind the monolith of an ethnicity or a nationality. And it's through telling these personal stories that I believe human beings can connect with each other on a personal level and have a more intimate look at humanity 
and be able to then be better citizens in our world. I love that. And I completely agree. Thank you for that. So can you share your thoughts on the importance of being able to provide a platform for these stories to be told? Because you know, you see more people nowadays are really building their own platforms as opposed to waiting for opportunities. And I love that spirit. Actually, that's something that I did too. I pitched all my ideas to agents and managers and production companies. No one wanted them at all. And I was so devastated in that moment when they said to me, That's that's cute and everything, but why don't you want to make any money? Because there was no market for stories like mine. And that's actually when I decided that I wanted to become a producer so that I would never have to wait for someone to tell me yes. And so I went to school for that to create my own platform. Luckily for me, you know, in the years that passed while I was pursuing that, you know, the world shifted a little bit. I won't say a lot, but a little bit to make a little bit of space for diverse stories. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really fantastic that platforms like HBO Max are making space for these stories because guess what? We're customers too. We crave content just as much as anybody else. We have money to spend on their service. Provide content that speaks to us. So I think I think it's wonderful that there's some space coming now for us. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that, that you made the decision and you're like, I'm going to be a producer. That's phenomenal. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so do you have any advice for the youth or anyone that's interested in getting into the entertainment industry and they don't know where to start? Yeah, absolutely. I actually think right now is a wonderful time to be a beginner trying to get into the industry. There are so many resources because of the pandemic that are now online that didn't used to be, you know, before you had to be in New York or LA if you wanted to break in. But actually, you can access the same kind of beginning education that will give you a really big leg up in trying to break into the industry from anywhere in the world. For example, if you want to be a writer, there's incredible writing classes available online that are pretty really quite affordable at community colleges, for example, that are cheap or even free if you qualify for the appropriate grants. Uh, there's classes and work private workshops like Script Anatomy, which is a wonderful organization that I highly recommend. Uh, There's like private consultants that take on students, if that's what more your speed. Jen Grisanti is a wonderful person who has her own consultancy, somebody that I learned from. Um, Like I said, community colleges, UCLA Extension. There's tons of opportunities for you to begin your journey as somebody acquiring the skills you need to break into the industry. 